Exactly. But there's more so, motions uh, that yeah, happened so the, today. So the first day they had that, that motion, uh, that took up pretty much the whole morning. And then they had uh, the defense had another motion to compel and a motion for sanctions. The basis of this motion was that uh, the state has been very late in their discovery, tendering it over to the defense. Mm-hmm. In some cases, nine, nine, ten months past the discovery deadline dates. Um, additionally, they're claiming that there's information that they never got uh, at all. You know, that there's information that they know exists that they're still waiting for. Uh, so they they kind of went through everything with that. And the sanctions they're asking for is that she give date certain, like in terms of, okay, if you, if you have discovery, we want it within seven days of you guys getting it. Sure. Uh, we want date certain for stuff that's outstanding that you say that you have. We want it by like August 13th, you know? Yeah. So she, like the sanctions aren't really like they're asking for punishment. Um, just, other just, than yeah, just be reasonable on what you're getting and, and let's move this along and not have to have so, somebody begging for it in a hearing. Exactly. And like, the, I mean, there is like a couple of the things that they're saying that were very late disclosed, you know, the defense is asking for them to to bar that evidence. And like McClellan's argument was like, well, no, that's the most extreme remedy. You just grant a continuance. Like if they need time to dig into this shit, especially with the, like the geofencing stuff came real late. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's another phone extraction uh, that has been just kind of hanging there in the wind forever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they're still waiting to get that. Apparently a new version of uh, Cellubrite, which is a tool law enforcement uses in order to extract mm-hmm. data from phones. A new version of that came out. So he's running that report and he's analyzing it. And they're supposed to be turning that over. That's what they're asking for, for uh, by the 13th of August. So kind of left it there. Um, I think the judge will probably rule like, look, you know, I'm good with the give. It's get we're getting close to trial. Give it to yeah. him in seven days. Yeah. You got it. Date certain on on the ones that we know exist and that you haven't turned over. And you know, just play nice with each other. Let's just get this thing moving. We're going to trial. Yeah. Because she she talked about today. Um, and again, if our viewers don't know, this was been set for trial. It was originally it's been set a couple times. <laughs> yes. The most the most recent time uh, was supposed to go in mid May. Mm-hmm. That got kicked. Uh, but they had already sent out the the, the uh, jury questionnaires back then. They sent 600 out. Uh, if, again, if you don't know anything about the case, they are importing a jury from Allen County, which is a much bigger county, and it's kind of where Fort Wayne, Indiana is, mm-hmm. probably the second biggest city next to Indianapolis. So they're going to be bringing, yeah. they're going to pick the jury up there. They're going to bring them down. So we just found out today that the jury questionnaires are going out tomorrow, another 600 of them. So this, the wheels are in motion again. This thing looks like it's going to really go in October. Unfortunately, Gull is not going to be televising it. Because frankly, everybody that was obsessed with Karen Reed, this thing's all of that and more. Made everybody you know? uh, think twice about uh, let's put cameras in the courtroom. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so that was the second motion. She took that under advisement as well. And this is all yesterday. And then the third motion, which was the one I was kind of looking for the most yesterday, was uh, the defense had filed a motion to dismiss. And it was based on the overall concept that uh, essentially the, that law enforcement has ghosted a bunch of evidence in order to hide the fact that there's other suspects out there Mm -hmm. uh, namely like brad holder they were really focusing on this guy brad holder they were looking at him real early like a like when when the girls went missing a bunch of people called in on this guy they're like dude look at this guy so they called him in on the 17th which was you know three days after the girls were discovered uh, over on ron logan's property deceased and um you know they they have no like so that's the the video it was take Gone. over yep so, uh, oops Dan, it vanished, the dvr right. didn't work we uh we, we put a tivo in there from o2 and it ran out <laughs> exactly. of its uh, uh 100 megabyte space or some bullshit yeah exactly yeah. exactly and then um i'm gonna look through my notes a little bit because there, there it was a, a lot, lot. And so yeah. they also uh you know and they're, what they're the other thing that they're trying to insinuate is that so Baldwin, Andrew Baldwin, who's the other one of the other defense attorneys, 
calls one of the young lawyers up in the courtroom real dramatic. It reminded me of that scene from Miracle on 34th Street <laughs> when they have Santa on the stand and the way that he proves it is by dumping all the mail, like, you know, all the letters to Santa. That's how you prove Santa exists. So he brings out, like, he lets his kid put these giant piles of paper. Okay, so he puts, like, four of them, three or four of them on the table. They're about a foot and a half high. Okay. And he's like, Your Honor, he's like, I, I just bought these to be, you know, for demonstrative evidence so that you could see each one of these pile represents one phone dump extraction. So, it, and, and what they've done is they have extracted 101 phones. Okay. Okay. And this is the amount of data printed out what it looks like. And, you know, so he's arguing and he's arguing. Yet, however, out of the 101 phones that they extracted, the one that they're claiming they didn't extract was Brad Holder. Of course. So, right. So, like, they extracted Holder's son, his phone, who was dating Abby. Like, they were young. I think okay. she was 15 and she was 13, but they were talking on the phone. Sure, kids. They yeah. Gotten together a couple times. You know, like, there, there's there's a knowledge there. There's a, yeah. now there's a connection between the holders and, and one of the victims, you know, and then you have all this shit that Brad holders posting on his Facebook. You've got the dudes are like a proclaimed self-proclaimed Odinist. Like there's no hiding. There is. Like, yes. It's is not it? a, it's yeah. not a hidden thing. When people oh. go into like the Odin thing is bullshit. No, it's actually not like just here. Right. Here's where you can go look at it. Right. Yeah. So, so we like all Baldwin, really did focus primarily on on holder and just the fact that they didn't really appear to have done any investigation or if they did what they've done is they've disappeared at all to make yeah. him seem like he's not the guy so they put on uh, multiple cops including jerry holman who is the lieutenant indiana state police one of the main dudes yeah, Doug Carter, Jerry Holman, Tony Liggett are the kind of the main three dudes, mm -hmm. the unified command, which is the little the little core group of yeah. the investigating team. And, you know, they, they claim that they cleared Brad Holder like early, you know, and that they cleared him through his uh, his time card from work, which had him at work by 455 a.m., taking lunch at 1222, coming back from lunch at 1242 and then leaving work at 2.35. In the meantime, they say, well, how far is his, uh, the landfill where he works, how far is that from the high bridge? And they say it's about a 35 minute drive. In the meantime, Holman says, well, we have, we believe that the time of death of the girls is between 2.30 and 3.30. Mm -hmm. All right, so in their minds, that alibis him out, mm -hmm. okay? So like, but what the reality is, is it's twofold in my estimation. It's one that you have a guy who has about two, two hours. Cause the next thing he does after work is he goes to anytime fitness mm -hmm. and uses Bob. And that's at about, I want to say 435 ish or right around there. Maybe it was a little earlier. And so you've got this period of time from the time he gets off work to where he goes and works out. And he posted that day. And he was like, like that post that he did on that day was like, my testosterone is raging. Like as soon as he gets to the gym, it's just a weird post. It's a weird. Yeah. Yeah. But like my bigger thing is not so much that he's alibied based on their shitty timeline. It's <laughs> exactly it's like, where, where, where did you get this timeline? Is your timeline? Are you doing a Murdoch? That like that's the last time. Is that, it just that, him giving the timeline of well, that's fact. He said it must be true, right? Well, yeah, I'm talking about when they think right. Like, yeah. I mean, we, we don't know what the me says. Like, yeah. I, I don't know when the me is because as far as we know, the girls aren't discovered until the following morning. Yeah, later in the morning, um, and they could have been killed at any point after they were uh, uh, you know abducted from the bridge. Yeah, yeah. we just don't know. And now it comes out that that uh, Libby's phone pings at 4.30 a.m., like inexplicably, like off the tower, as if the phone had been moved and like went active again. Mm -hmm. 
So, and, and no one's got an explanation for that, you know, and that that's a huge deal. So my point is, is that how are they clearing a guy by, how do you clear him without extracting his phone when he's got a known connection to the victim, when you've got a crime scene that, that obviously looks like it was staged to mimic uh, a ritualistic sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody really thinks that it was an actual ritualistic yeah. sacrifice, yeah. but whoever did the killings was mimicking it, whether yeah. it was to cover it up to make it seem like that, or whether it was somebody that's into Odinism and is just like, we're yeah. going to put some loons down, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. You know? So, but like, like the defense is arguing, how are you clearing this guy if you didn't extract his phone so ultimately to get there to win that motion they have to show that the evidence uh could have been either exculpatory or that it would uh be material and potentially helpful to the defense so once you clear that hurdle then you have to in order to get a motion to dismiss which is again the most extreme remedy like Mm -hmm. like there's no chance that they're winning this motion like just so we're clear about but then you have to be able to show that they intentionally destroyed it or intentionally ghosted it. So, which you're not going to be able to get a cop on the stand and say, yeah, we intentionally deleted the video from the 17th. Yeah. We, we did do an extraction, but we're pretending like we didn't. Mm -hmm. And Brad Holder's phone is no longer here. You know, it's like, they're saying if you're using common sense, They've done 101 phone extractions, and you're going to have us believe for one second that they didn't actually do an extraction of this guy's phone out of everybody. The one person, the one person that we'd really want to see it from, that's who you didn't do. Right. I mean, so like, it's a strong argument. She's not going to obviously dismiss the case, but... I mean, it's got like it's got legs. It's it it does. I mean, it's like bullshit. I mean, it legitimately should be for consideration for dismissing the case because it's a pretty big piece of this that is being just kind of like swept to the side like no big deal no big deal hey thanks for checking out the video be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially apple podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there also be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most we're on tiktok x instagram facebook just search hidden killers podcast with tony brewski and you'll find us right there again thanks for watching